something I've been playing about with for ages. Uh, I quite enjoy playing about this one. However, today I'm going to have a look at uh, using different ways to manipulate my sample um, using the amp envelope and the effects. Now, to make this sort of stand out, what I figured I would do is I would use the vocal. Take me dancing naked in the rain. Uh, tune from early 90s or so. At the moment, I've got it set on gate, so it will always stop when I let go of the button. Take me, take me dancing. The reason for that is I like to use it on hot slice. Take me dancing. And it just allows me to play the whole sample or stab it in. Which is why I use it on gate. However, we want to have a look at our amp envelope today. This is what is going to basically change how this sample plays. At the moment, when I press it, it starts. When I let go, it stops. Take me dancing. Take, take, take. It's quite harsh. That's where this envelope comes in. So at the moment, if you imagine this being your play button. So when you press play, take. it's instant. Then it plays, and when you let go, it's instant, and it stops. That is basically what this rectangle um, signifies. So we can change that by changing these three parts here by changing our attack, our release, and our hold. So our attack is how it starts. So if we basically make it so it's a slight slant, imagine it like pressing the button, but just maybe pushing the fader up slightly. Take me. So you can. Take me dancing, take it in the rain. Take me, take me. It's got a more softer approach to it coming in. This could be quite handy for maybe changing a, a kick or a snare drum to change how hard it, it comes in if it's quite quite a hard hit you can maybe remove a little bit of the harshness by just removing some of the attack or at least adding some attack um for that it's one of these things that i think you'd need to play about with it i think it's more of a, a music production um tool if, if you do a lot of production stuff you should know about attack release um on, on how you you apply them hold is obviously how long it would stay on for so when you can wind this right the way down Take me. I don't think it really applies much to this this sample the way I've got it set. However, the release again is quite hard. So if we bring this all the way down again, and then maybe wind on the release, you'll see it adds a slope, which is basically imagine me doing this with the fader. So with that, we can actually sort of tweak it a bit to work out. So we can we can make it softer as it comes out. So we can. So it's a lot softer when it comes out. Depending on how you want to use it, it depends on how it sounds, especially depending on what kind of things you put it on. I figured I'd choose the vocal because it'd be quite easy to hear the differences. Um, if you were to apply that to a kick, uh, I'll turn it off that. Probably not the best kick to apply that to. Um, I've got an EQ on that, that's probably why. So I wonder if we can turn that off. Yes, we can turn that off. Turn it up a bit just so we can hear it. Um, right, so with that, we can maybe... See, you can remove the harshness by just adding some attack. Depending on how you want to go about it. So that's, that's something else to sort of play around with. Um, now I mentioned we're gonna look at effects as well. I've got a bit of a habit of applying an EQ to um, my, my percussion when I play with it because it just allows me to bring out certain elements of it. So for example I've got a clap here if I turn that off probably difficult to tell the difference um, but what I usually try and do is pick out a certain sound that I might like
with an EQ. Obviously you could apply a different effect, you could have it on a delay. Um, it's very much a matter of change of parameters to where you think you would want them. Um, but I say for my setup here I've got it on an EQ. Um, your other effects obviously filter as a filter. You would need to kind of play around with these. I find the more you play with them, the more you get to understand what does what. Um, I don't think there's any right or wrong here. It just depends on the sounds you're after. The one thing I have learned is to apply the EQ. Um, I'm going to go back to my vocal here purely because it's slightly longer than a drum hit to play with. Um, the other thing you can do this rather than using the dials, you can actually drag this as well. You can use the screen. Take me dancing. So using my vocal, I'm going to apply an EQ this time, and the band type I'm going to set to a low pass filter. Take me dancing. But I'm going to wind take, take, take. wind it all the way up to twenty thousand uh, hertz. Take me dancing. So basically, the filter is not filtering anything. That's what I want. Um, now I have that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use LFO, which is the frequency oscillator. So this is basically the path of what the frequency is going to do um, once I tell the machine um, what I want it to affect. So we're going to change the destination, which is basically the part of the effect or, or parameter that we want to apply this wave to. And I'm going to change this to the frequency of my two band EQ part one. Take me dancing, take it in the pain. So now you can hear the difference. So now we can actually play with the depth and the speed of it. And you can start getting stuttered effects. This is just using the low pass frequency and the LFO together. You can apply this on every single thing that's on this machine in terms of effects. I found this to be probably the most effective one for me to play with. Um, and again, we can change the, the shape of the wave. We can maybe make it a square wave, which I, I would say the best way to describe that one would be more like the transform on your mixer. Maybe don't turn that one on, eh? Um, now, at the moment, we've got it on speed equals six, which is just a general number. However, if we press sync, it will then sync it to the beat. Just to make this work, I'll set this going. And now we'll go back into the LFO for this. So as you can hear, it actually sticks to the beat quite well. Um, depends on what you want and how you want it to go. I quite like using the sine wave. I think it adds a bit of smoothness and I generally turn the sync off. Um, this time I'm going to apply my vocal onto the actual sequence and then I'll just manipulate it as it goes. Again, if we turn the sync on, you kind of hear the effect as it changes when you change the parameter of the speed. I guess it's like changing the beat on your uh, mixer uh, to change the parameters of well, um, your, your filters, your flanders, uh, your trans effects, it's the same idea. Um, only this time, it's just applying it to the low pass filter of your EQ here. So these two are interlinked. Obviously, you can turn it off. That's just using it on a vocal. 
Um, I find a lot of that's quite good to use on um, sort of long sustaining sounds. Um, I'm just trying to think if I've got any on this one. Right, so this one here, I've actually got a filter on it um, already, which... It just allows me to sort of change how, how that part sounds. So maybe what we could do is we could turn the LFO off on, on the uh, vocal and we'll run it on the piano part, this one. Same idea, same frequency. In fact, I think because I've got that not actually on that part, it needs to be on the filter. It should be further down the list, I believe. Um, it's not really one effect I use much. Maybe what we'll do is we'll just stick that onto a low pass, as mentioned, and then reapply this as I've just been talking about. It would make more sense really, wouldn't it? However, as you can see, there is a whole pile of different things you can apply it to. At this point, it very much is trial and error of how you go about using your EQs, filters, and frequency oscillators to make this work. But maybe that would explain the use of like using a filter with a LFO, but also maybe how you could implement your um, amp envelope with that as well. So say for example, we've got that set. Quite a nice stabby little piano. We could add um, this part back in. Maybe we'll add a bit of release. Now we'll stab it in instead of play it. So obviously you can play around with it as much as you want really to work out what you want to do with it. At the end of the day, it's up to you and how you want things to sound. But definitely play around with this if you want it to sound softer or harder, depending on how you want your samples to come in and out of your mix. And then I'd say I find the two band EQ is really good for this, bring a little bit out when it comes to sort of trying to get a bit more sound out of samples. But the LFO is really good for adding a bit more texture as you can see in the So we can kind of have a nice wee build up, just, just even with that little piano, it's quite nice.
obviously you could sample this, loop it in, so it will continue playing, and just slowly bring things in and out. Endless. Anyway, hopefully that might explain um, how you could maybe use amp envelope along with things like the EQ and the LFO together to create a different kind of sound out of just one simple sample. Um, hopefully this kind of thing might be useful for you. 